Well, good morning, friends. Good morning. Good morning. Hello. And welcome to the Congregational Church of Brookfield this morning. We welcome all of you here um, and extend a special welcome to those of you who are visiting with us today. Remember that no matter who you are or where you are on life's journey, you are welcome and we are delighted that you have joined us in worship this morning. And we do have just a couple of quick announcements for you as we begin our worship. We do invite everyone to remain masked during the service. You may notice that some of us who are leading parts of worship will be unmasked just so you can hear us, but otherwise we will unmask ourselves as well in between. Um, we also uh, will, after worship, have a couple of things happening. One, um, our wonderful fellowship committee has set up a time of refreshment um, outside in our courtyard. Um, we do have a quick congregational meeting. So for those folks who are members, we do invite you to stick around um, just so that you can um, help us make a decision about the following. According to our bylaws, we get to read the call to the congregational meeting, and so here it is. It says, in accordance with Article 5, Section B of the bylaws of the Congregational Church of Brookfield, a congregational meeting has been hereby duly called for Sunday, September 26, 2021, immediately following the 10.30 a.m. service of worship to vote on the expenditure of $26,730 from the Buildings and Grounds Endowment Fund to replace the air conditioning systems for our meeting house, which you are sitting in and enjoying right now. Um, we, that signed Jack Brown, our moderator, and Christy McPadden, our church clerk. Um, and so we do need a quorum, and so we just invite that those who are members, if you could stick around for just a few minutes. We don't think it will be long or controversial unless Ken has some surprise for us. Um, but, uh, but we would love for you to participate in that. Um, and Sally, I know that you have a quick announcement for us this morning, too. You can see my face this morning. All right, so um, I'm Sally Markowitz, and I am recruiting people for the fair, along with Tom Young, who is back there. He'll be speaking later. You'll recognize him. Um, these are the posters this year. Please take one. Um, they also come in a smaller size. Um, take one, put it up. Um, and if you have n have, uh, can't be at the fair and would like to bake, we always need baked goods. And I think Tom has a lot more to say about the fair later, so bye. <laughs> So Sally is exiting. <laughs> um, the other thing that I would just make note of is that um, our choir is back today. Uh, Tony has done, yay! <laughs> Tony has done a whole lot of work in researching what is safe and healthy and in making, um, literally sewing on her own singer's masks for all of our choir members. So um, we are so grateful to Tony and we are excited to hear all of you. So thank you for coming to share your gifts with us. Are there any other announcements this morning? Then let us prepare, um, take a few moments of silence to prepare our hearts and minds as we listen to the tolling of our church bell. Please join me in the call to worship. God is our shepherd. God shares with us things we didn't even know we needed. We are refreshed from God's stores of wisdom and love. God gathers us, reminds us to catch our breath for a moment before sending us back with guidance and direction. Even when our way gets difficult and murky, we need not fear, because God is at our side, walking along with us. God's beauty and love chase after us every day. And we find ourselves at home in the house of God, ready to worship with you. Generous God and giver of all things, we rest in your love and care. You go before us leading us in pathways that are secure. And so we trust in your guidance and wisdom. As human beings, we know there will be stressful and dark times, 
When life seems to be nothing but struggle, it is in those times, especially, that we rely on your presence to guide and bless us. We thank you for offering us forgiveness, setting us right again, and providing us with the tools we need for the tasks we face. You nourish our souls and bodies and heal our life's wounds, and your generous love fills us to overflowing. We thank you for the promise that your unfailing love will stay with us always, and we pray that you would send your spirit upon us, helping us to share that love with others. In the name of Jesus Christ, who taught us to pray together. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Will you pray with me? Holy One, we thank you that we can turn to you any time, in any way. Sometimes our prayers come in words, other times in songs, and still others in sighs too deep for words, in tears and laughter. And yet, you understand them all. We thank you that you speak to us in many different ways, too. Even though the words of the saints, even through the words of the saints who have gone before us centuries or millennia ago. So we pray as we hear these words that you might help us to hear your still speaking voice and the direction you offer for our lives in the world today. Amen. Today's scripture reading comes from James chapter 5, verses 13 through 16 and 19 through 20. Are you hurting? Pray. Do you feel great? Sing songs of praise. Are you sick? Call the church leaders together to pray and anoint you with oil in the name of the Master. Believing prayer will heal you, and Jesus will put you on your feet. And if you've sinned, you'll be forgiven, healed, inside and out. Make this your common practice. Confess your sins to each other and pray for each other so that you can live together whole and healed. The prayer of a person living right with God is something powerful to be reckoned with. My dear friends, if you know people who have wandered off from God's truth, don't write them off. Go after them. Get them back, and you will have rescued precious lives from destruction and prevented an epidemic of wandering away from God. May God add a blessing to our hearing and understanding of these words. Amen.
Friends, will you pray with me for a moment? <clears throat> Holy One, in these moments, help us to be still and to know that you are God and that your presence and your love are here surrounding us. Settle in us, even if just for these moments, all that is unsettled, so that we might open ourselves up fully and truly to the words and the direction that you have for each of our lives today. Amen. At my grandmother's funeral <clears throat> a few years back now, her pastor told the story of the last visit they had together and the last words my grandma said to her before she kind of trailed back off into sleep at the end of their visit. Those words were, I hope. And while my uncle, who spoke later in her service, dealing with grief and public speaking as so many of us do with equal measure of laughter and tears, said he thinks that the way my grandma finished that sentence to herself was more about a hidden winning lotto ticket that she had hoped someone would find. Grandma's pastor said that she thought that grandma may have finished it on her own in silence with something a little bit more godlike, perhaps. And while many folks who are teetering on the edge of this world and their families might pray for miraculous healing, my grandma, who admittedly did have about eight more lives than she should have given her medical history, was realistic toward the end of her life. She knew that she wasn't going to cash in any more get out of heaven free cards, so she set her affairs in order and she turned her sights toward God. So perhaps the way she finished that sentence was, I hope that it's just like they show in the movies when someone has a near-death experience. Or, I hope Grandpa and Uncle David are there waiting for me. Or, I hope that I've made amends with anything, anyone with whom I have been out of sorts. Or, I hope that the end is peaceful for me and my family. However it is that my grandma finished that sentiment on her own, in her own silence, was between her and God. But it was more than just a few words spoken aloud. I believe it was a prayer. You may have seen the same things that I have floating around the internet lately, like posts asking people what their go-to two-word prayer is. Or maybe that's just something for church geeks as I'm looking at all of your faces staring back at me right now. <laughs> I think my grandma may have inadvertently shared hers, though. I hope. And author Annie Lamott takes it one step further and says that some of the best prayers she offers to God are not even two words, but just one. Words like help, thanks, wow. And yet others would say that the deep inhale of breath that you take in when you witness something awful or you see something absolutely gorgeous that takes your breath away are just as much a prayer as any words ever will be. All we have to do is remember that, as it says in Psalm 23, God accompanies us everywhere we go, in lush, open spaces, in the valley of shadows, before our enemies, at times of celebration, even when we don't quite believe it or realize it. And so James, who scholars believe to have been a pastor in the Jerusalem church, shares these words of wisdom and challenge from our scripture today advice to the Jewish Christians who were living in places far and wide, separated by experiences of persecution or threats of persecution under Roman rule. James writes, pray, confess, don't let anyone stray. Are you hurting? Pray. Do you feel great? Sing songs of praise. Are you sick? Call the church leaders together to pray and anoint you with oil in the name of the master. Make this your common practice. Confess your sins to each other and pray for each other so that you can live together whole and healed. If you know people who have wandered off from God's truth, don't write them off. Go after them. Truth be told, one of the reasons why I believe this passage called to me from the possible readings outlined for today was that it challenged me to wrestle and struggle a bit. And it did the same for our group when I brought it into Bible study. We hear the call to pray, and we can readily accept that. We're instructed numerous times throughout scripture to pray without ceasing, 
to go to God with all the things of our lives, to lift up things to God with prayer and supplication, to offer God our thanks and praise, to share with God our needs. So that part was pretty easy to digest as I read the scripture. It's the other parts that were a bit more challenging. The idea that if we believe or pray hard enough that healing will happen, the idea of confession in front of or to others, the call to bring people back into the fold to prevent an epidemic of wandering from God. None of those was quite as easy to get my brain wrapped around. I have known and walked the journey with enough people to know that no matter how hard I pray, sometimes miraculous physical healing is not the answer I receive. And I have seen people confess things publicly and seem to lose a lot in doing so. And I have reached out to those who have wandered, and sometimes they have come back, but not always in the way that I would have wanted them to. And so I struggled with this scripture a bit until I had an opportunity to sit with others and think about it and chew on it and to dive a little bit into the background of when James was writing. Because you see, unless you read more of James' thoughts on prayer or learn more about the context when it was written, it's written, it is easy to read into this passage that if we believe or pray hard enough, then all will be well fixed. Magic. However, our ancestors in faith were sitting in a time of corruption and injustice and poverty with the backdrop of war that would destroy Jerusalem and scatter its people. The Romans were happy to tolerate other religions as long as the people from those other religions were willing to honor the Romans' gods. And the Jewish Christians just weren't willing to do that, following one God who could handle it all. So James writes this letter as a pastor, writing to his people to remind them to pray in the face of trials, to do good works and not resort to violence in the midst of the challenge of the times, to care for those in need, to seek and pray for God's wisdom and not to follow the wisdom of the world. The backdrop for those who are following Christ's way was that of Jewish beliefs, including the Jewish beliefs about prayer. The prayer was not to be self-seeking or to serve only one's own passions, but the prayer was about renewing over and over again our relationship with God and about repairing the broken places in creation. Prayer, whether prayers of praise or confession or, about, or petition or whether joy or concern, was not lifted up so people could direct God in what to do. But rather, the belief was that it is not God who changes through prayer, but people who change when they pray. I've learned much more about prayer and building a relationship with God from those who seem like they have the least control and have come to accept that. Whether those who are chronically or terminally ill, those who have lost employment or relationships, those who have gotten in so deep that they know no other way out. When they feel like all hope is lost, they have come to pray the most fervent, most honest prayers. And we are human, so admittedly I would be lying if I had never lifted up or heard lifted up a magic wand God kind of prayer or a request for a particular miracle. But more often than not, the things these people pray or ask me to pray about are things like clarity and direction and peace for following whatever path lies ahead for God's grace in the places and relationships that have been broken, for healing in whatever way it is possible, perhaps not in body, but in mind and in spirit, and for those who are around them, for doctors and nurses and bosses and coworkers and family members and friends, that they too might know God's love and direction and peace on the journey ahead as well. And what I have noticed is that no matter how sad or angry or guilt-ridden or doubt-filled or confused or questioning, the prayers still come. Sometimes in tears, sometimes in sighs, sometimes in screams. And prayer shawls and prayers are still requested. And that reminds me that even when all hope may seem lost otherwise, there is still this belief in God's presence and provision. Maybe not always providing what we want, but providing for needs in some ways that we may not have even expected. 
And so I think about my own experience with the things that James advises us in this part of the letter. And those moments when I have had something eating at me that I have done, something I have needed to confess. When I have gone to the person that I have offended or hurt in some way and shared my confession and apologies, my concerns and my questions, I have more often than not, thanks to God's grace, not only found not meaningless forgiveness or a quick it's okay, but rather a real and deep connection and a sense of repairing of a breach. Things may not be the same as they were before, but reconnection is a gift that offers possibility and hope. In those moments when I have gone after someone who has wandered away from this place or from God, I have found that some have come back because it's good to know that you are cared for not only by God, but by other people. And some have not come back, but they have found other communities where they can worship God in a way that makes sense to them. And some have come back in tentative ways, finding a place to use their gifts and skills like the Yankee Fair or the thrift shop, or to make connections like in a fellowship group. They may not all be the ways I would have prescribed, but they are ways that allow for reconnection, sometimes with us and always with God, that offer possibility and hope. And in those moments when I have sat with someone and prayed fervently for healing or direction, what I have found sometimes, like in the case of my grandma, is that healing happened, just not in the physical way that kept her with us any longer. But relationships that had been broken by misunderstandings or lack of time and energy found a sense of urgency and a space to heal. People came together, family members and friends, in ways we had not in some time, providing opportunities for laughter and tears, for storytelling and sharing, for consideration of how her legacy would live on. There were opportunities for healing and reconnection that offered possibility and hope. Believing prayer will heal you, writes James, and Jesus will put you on your feet. Perhaps this doesn't happen in the way we might most wish or desire, but we are reminded, like anything, sometimes it is less about the destination than it is about the journey. Prayer, praise, confession, petition, Words, sighs, laughter, tears, one word or two words or nine million words or zero words. It's not about directing God who sees and knows a bigger picture than we ever will, but it is about changing us, about paths toward healing and reconciliation, toward reconnection and using our gifts for good in the world, toward possibility and hope. The prayer of a person living right with God is something powerful to be reckoned with, it says in the scripture. So friends, even when all hope seems lost, remember that God goes before you and beside you, wanting only the best quality of life for God's beloved, guiding and directing moments of healing and reconciliation and blessing, even in the midst of the darkest times, not only in our relationships, but in the world. Pray, confess, don't let anyone stray. May your prayers be a force to be reckoned with. Amen. And so now, friends, we are going to invite the choir to come forward, and we invite you to really feel the way this anthem, I believe, moves you, and to pay special attention to the words They are words that were scrawled on a cellar wall during World War II and the Holocaust where Jews were hidden. The words are these. I believe in the sun when it's not shining. I believe in love even when I don't feel it. I believe in God even when God is silent.
wow moments, huh? Really, thank you so much, choir. Absolutely beautiful. It's wonderful to hear your voices uh, back in this place and in this space. So friends, we come now to a time where we are able to share some of the joys and the concerns that are lying on our hearts today, um, both about the world that is around us and um, in our own families and our own situations. Um, <clears throat> As we look out in the world, um, I would invite your prayers for wisdom to guide the situation at our borders as Haitian and Afghan folks try to make their way to places of safety after times of disaster and war in their countries. And we're praying for organizations like our refugee resettlement ministry partner, IRIS, who are trying to navigate their way through new directives to help settle people into places and spaces where they can rebuild their lives. Um, we pray today for the family of Gabby Petito as they grieve her loss and for the families of the thousands who go missing each year, um, especially those of minority and indigenous background, all who are still trying to find answers with limited resources. We pray for those who are victims of gun violence and their families as another shooting made the national news this week, and we know there are many others that did not. For all of those who are struggling to rebuild after recent disasters, storms, and wildfires, and floods, and um, for an increased sense of how we may become more responsible stewards of God's creation as well. Um, and I lift up to you today um, the Mission 22 hike that happened um, in my hometown yesterday that raised money and awareness about veteran suicide and the plight of those who have served our country who bear scars both visible and invisible as well. Um, as we look at those prayers that people have requested be lift, lifted up uh, today, uh, Richard, we are praying for your mom, Irma, and your dad, Alex. Um, Richard's mom, as he was headed out to um, visit his dad, um, had a heart attack, and so she is in the process of recovering, and we pray for her continued recovery. We're praying for Ron, who's struggling with health issues and loneliness. Um, for Mary, who was supposed to be here uh, ushering today, but we found out this morning is instead in the hospital with a broken ankle, and so we pray for her recovery. For Tanya, who has been re-injured while in the process of trying to recover, and for um, some folks in our congregation who are recovering from surgery or recent hospital stays or illness. And um, we've also been asked to lift up some prayers for some very close to us who struggle with addiction or mental health issues, who um, are victims of sexual assault or domestic violence um, during this time as well. Um, we do have some prayers of joy and gratitude to lift up today too. Um, we are praying today for Pastor Bryn as she continues her time of hopeful rest and renewal as she is on sabbatical through um, just before Thanksgiving. Um, we are grateful for Sarah who is settling in out in Portland with much appreciation for all of your prayers that went with her and um, the generosity of her housewarming gift from Women's Fellowship, which she very much appreciated and received recently. Again, for the choir and for Tony who has worked so hard to make it safe for uh, them to sing in this place. Um, I lift up Emily and Doug, whose wedding I had the pleasure of officiating yesterday afternoon. And um, also, this week, I think it's like on Tuesday, marks the 264th anniversary of the Congregational Church of Brookfield. So happy almost birthday, church, right? <laughs> 264 years is nothing to shake a stick at, my friends. So um, we are so grateful to all of you who continue to um, participate in our ministries around here and who continue to support the work and ministries of our church as well. Um, I am going to leave some space in the midst of our prayers today for you to lift up names. Um, you can lift them up aloud or in the silence of your own hearts um, for reason of concern or for reason of joy. Um, note that there are prayer cards also by both of our doors. So if you do have something that you would like to be included in public worship, um, please just feel free to fill one of those out and place it in one of the offering plates that are by the doors as well. Um, and as we come to our time of prayer, I share with you um, today the words of Barbara Peterson from this great resource called Flames of the Spirit. So friends, will you join your hearts and your souls in the spirit of prayer with me? Loving God who creates us into new being each day, we thank you for your creation of our lives, for your recreation of hope within us, even when hope seems foolish. We pray for this world of ours in which self-interest and grasping for power often seem to be the rules by which human beings live. We confess our responsibility for those thoughts and actions by which we further the powers of destruction in our world. 
For we know finally that becoming human is a process of reconciliation and not of separation, of trust and not suspicion, of communion and not coercion. We accept your call to peacemaking. Wherever we may be and in whatever situation we find the hatreds, the fears, or the distrusts, which cry out for peace to heal and to mend the brokenness. Help us each to offer thanks to you, God, not in empty words or pious gestures, but in lives which are faithful to your call. Enable us to bear the fruits of thankfulness in serving others and in building community with those in our lives. May we reach out to others, supporting them in their struggles and celebrating with them their joys and victories. May we also accept the love and friendship offered to us by others as we confess and acknowledge our needs, our weaknesses, our times of hopelessness. God, we see your loving purpose in these expressions of human concern. We feel your loving touch healing us and caring for us as a child as cared for by a parent. And we realize that you continue to be active in our lives and in the world around us and in the lives of those who are on our hearts today who so need to know your presence and your healing and your strength and your touch. And we lift those names up to you now. God, we lift up in prayer to you these friends and family from our lives that you may bring healing and wholeness to their lives. And God, we thank you for celebrations, for new births, for the sound of music once again, for voices shared, for anniversaries, for new transitions that have gone well. And God, we pray that you would be in the midst of all of those situations to offering your hope and your guidance, your direction, your wisdom for the future. For God, we know that you are with us and for us in the midst of our lives. And so we praise you and thank you for this constant love and ask that you would help us to share that kind of love with others through our words and actions, following the example of Jesus Christ in whose name we pray. Amen. And now I'd like to invite Tom Young to come forward to share with us. Disclaimer, this is less a call to share than a call to fair. <laughs> Show prop. As you know, Sally, Jack and I are staffing the Yankee Fair with volunteers such as y'all. And as the theme is, we're back, I thought we need a theme song. I could have gone with, hey, it's good to be back home again. Don't you think any motorcycle is louder than me? <laughs> I've got him back in my arms again. Or the theme from Welcome Back, Cotter. But as I workshopped all that, they did not capture the essence of the fair. First, we need people to know that the fair is happening. Next, while fairs are supposed to be fun and as much work as the fair is, there is a special feeling of camaraderie to our fair that happens in the days leading up to it as well as the day itself. Just like committee work, plug, <laughs> study groups, fellowship, participation in the fair is a solid bonding process. Though, perhaps the same thing could have been accomplished with a bowling league. <laughs> the fair is also an outreach to the community, both in the use of the profits, uh, well, P-R-O-F-I-T-S, as well as fair day being some people's first exposure to our church. Thus, I channeled my inner Tony Sullivan, and came up with this. Tell everybody, 
tell everyone, Yankee Fair is coming back. There will be lots of fun. Tell everybody, tell everyone, Yankee Fair is coming back. God's work to be done. I would like to call on my assistants to pass out some papers because this is the audience participation part of our show. So, Pastor Jen, I think we timed it well enough so that we can do this. I will show you how it's sung. I have borrowed the melody from a friend of mine. He wrote it 40 years ago. He doesn't even remember writing it. Go figure. It goes like this. Tell everybody, tell everyone, the Yankee Fair's coming back. There'll be lots of fun. Tell everybody, tell everyone, Yankee Fair's coming back, God's work to be done. Okay, so I think we've got the papers. We're going to give it a try. Here we go. Uno, dos, tres. Tell everybody, tell everyone, Yankee Fair's coming back, there'll be lots of fun. Tell everybody, tell everyone, Yankee Fair's coming back, God's work to be done. It is three weeks from yesterday, so it is 20 days. 20 days of joy, rapture, and expectancy. <laughs> I'll come get my props later. Okay. <laughs> so now, friends, is, oh, okay. Thank you. In case that singing was not enough for you, friends, we invite you to stand now and join with us in singing our final hymn, Great is Thy Faithfulness. <laughs>
gracious unto you. May the Lord look upon you with loving kindness and grant you peace. And may God watch between and among us until we meet again. Amen. Amen. And now we remind you that we invite you to stay for our brief uh, congregational meeting and then to uh, get some refreshments outside. Um, and to, of course, share a sign of Christ's peace with one another and bring those signs of peace out into the world. The peace of Christ be with you all. Thank you.